it is so important to me to ensure that this show only promotes positivity and love. Take this episode and use it to encourage yourself to listen to that inner voice, your intuition. Remember, intuition by definition is a thought before your brain overcomplicates things. It's literally our roadmap to happiness and success. All we have to do is learn to follow it. Together, we can reach our full potential and redefine life on our terms. Here's another show that's going to help you get even closer. <laughs> Welcome to Inspired by Jimmy L. I am bread. I am proof. I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. John and David, the creators and founders of Debt Free Guys. This was a fantastic fantastic conversation with two guys that have broken free of debt ah, oh my gosh no bs no crap no doggone marketing schemes these two can actually help you with a realistic and unique plan to get and stay out of debt quickly message them on facebook at debt free guys or you can visit their website at www.debtfreeguys.com or <laughs> Listen to their podcast, Queer Money. In their words, join us in living fabulously. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> this show is about to knock your socks off with realism. Buckle up, baby. Buckle up. Are you ready? <laughs> now we're ready. Sorry. Yeah, okay. We're <laughs> it, looks like we're, it looks like we're already recording though, right? We are. I'm going to, okay. what I will do, I will cut out the beginning okay. part. So that okay. part won't show. That's, okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of fun. Like, how do you get set up for a show? <laughs> and it is, <laughs> which is what I was going to say. Um, but welcome everybody to another wonderful episode with Inspired by Jimmy L. Today we have Mr. David and Mr. John on with us. They're here to kind of help us get debt free. Um, <laughs> they are the creators of Debt Free Guys and they want to give us some practical tips, at least I want to get into their mindset behind the story of uh, Debt Free Guys and the practical tips of being debt free. Sure. But before we get off into that, thank you guys so much for saying yes. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for having us. We yes, appreciate definitely. it. So first question, how long have you guys been married? Oh, oh that's, a, that's a doozy of a question. So <laughs> depends on who you ask. <laughs> when, um, do you know when this will air? <laughs> this actually, it'll be the end of, end of, actually, we're almost there. So the first week in July. I'll okay. do the first week in July. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, by the time that this airs, um, we will have been married officially for a year, but we will only have done the show um, a couple days prior. <laughs> we're getting, the show? <laughs> right. We're getting, a, we're getting married in front of our friends on June 29th. Yeah. Gotcha. So the spectacle okay. happens a year after we actually did the deed. Yep. Well, Is there have, any reason? Yeah. Um, actually, we were recording a podcast, uh, our, our Queer Money podcast, with uh, a tax professional from Mass Mutual. And he was okay. sharing us with us the benefits of the spousal and survival um, benefits from Social Security. And oh, okay. okay. Those benefits um, only kick in um, at the earliest nine months after you've been officially married. Um, domestic partnership and um, whatever else other options there are don't apply. So um, at, in, during the recording of that podcast, I said to David, we're getting married next week. <laughs> Now, it was probably, I think, next month until we actually got married, but um, we did that expeditiously, um, and we didn't have a chance to invite friends and family. So um, that's, what, um, that's what later this month um, will be about. Gotcha. I, I, you guys are so much better than we are. Like we, <laughs> like, we initially started out, I'm like, this is totally off topic, but we initially started out <laughs> wanting to do this big, huge, grand thing, and I swear, we have been engaged for three years. <laughs> and uh, we were, I was going to get married in September because it was the day that we agreed that we were together, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But we already agreed that. But in probably May of that same year, we called off everything. We was like, we're not doing anything, just you and I, and we're going. 
like yeah. just damn it bump like we didn't want to do it with family we didn't want to do it with friends and so and i feel so bad that you say that about wanting to do the show quote unquote for your friends because <laughs> my mom is still is still rubbing her the wrong way <laughs> like i would have come and i was like i know yeah. mom you know like, okay we'll, we'll talk about that later right so <laughs> none of our friends know uh, our wedding planner knows that we're married but none of our friends do so they'll you have out. got to be joking <laughs> yeah that's why i asked when this is going to be aired in case anybody okay watching. yeah no this yeah <laughs> Yeah, this. <laughs> God, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> oh my God, I would be pissed. By the way, <laughs> I would be pissed. <laughs> so okay, so when did the whole debt free God start? Like, what what prompted that? Well, that I, probably started twenty thirty five years ago. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I will. I will. You said that you were engaged for three years. We've actually yes. been engaged for. Well, the first time uh, we got engaged was 2006. 12, okay. oh, 12 13 years. <laughs> and then there, was, okay. then there was Prop 8. We were going to go yeah. to California. There was Prop mm -hmm. 8. We were going to do it in Colorado with civil unions, and that didn't pass. So we had a series of uh, unfortunate events <laughs> that yeah, prevented yeah. us from getting married. Um, but actually, it was, it was somewhat fortunate for us because the latter half of, uh, of being uh, fiancés is when we kind of decided that we were going to go ahead and, and move forward with our business. And that's why we've held off for the, the last, literally the last four years. Um, but, uh, I've had, I had the albatross of debt around my neck for 17 years, uh, after my mom took me to a credit union to get a credit card to use it as uh, in cases of emergency, when I okay, took a vacation, just, just one. <laughs> yes, just one. Um, she said to use this for an, uh, an emergency, and uh, I went on that trip. I came back, and the card was almost maxed out, and I, I had not. You never saw a jail or a hospital. <laughs> yeah. So at no. Yeah, no emergencies. Well, shopping emergencies, I guess. <laughs> now those are the best. Time. <laughs> right. But uh, why? Like, okay, so. But what prompted you guys to start? I mean, was it your debt alone that you said, hey, you want to help other people? Well, so to speed a story along, uh, about a year and a half after David and I were boyfriends, um, we finally had a come to Jesus moment that we had $51,000 worth of credit card debt between the two of us. Um, the irony was at the time we had about 15 years of combined experience in financial services. So we were helping other people with their money, but we weren't helping ourselves. And so we thought this is ridiculous. Um, we came up with a plan. We paid off our debt in two and a half years. And then after that, we thought towards the end of paying off our debt, we thought, you know, we're, we're learning a lot here, both from personal experience as well from our professional experience. And we thought, well, we could help people. Um, and at the time we thought, well, we'll write a book. Um, and okay, the way wait, it goes wait a second. is... <laughs> wait a second. Now, David, why did you laugh about that? Because <laughs> he knows it's coming. Because I know he's going he's gonna to tell how long it took us to write the book, and I don't agree with it. It's one of those, you know... Oh, my gosh! <laughs> it took us okay, nearly John, 10 sorry. years to write that book. Yeah. On and off. <laughs> On and off, because it was happening in fits and starts. But we thought after we published the book that Oprah would invite us on her show and that we would be... Of course. I mean, that's the dream. Right, right. And then exactly. you become one of her favorite things. Right. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> I would love to be. She'll stick me in her pocket. And, um, <laughs> but uh, that's not how it works at all. And um, so we learned the hard way. Uh, fortunately, though, we were shopping our book around to agents, and we got a lot of positive feedback. Um, okay. But uh, the obstacle was that we had no platform. We didn't have a radio yeah, show, sure. a TV show, a blog, whatever. Um, and one of the uh, publishers suggested that we try to build our platform before we shop our book. So that's kind of how yeah. we got into blogging, which eventually led to the Debt Free Guys, um, which kicked off about, what was that, 2012? 2013, 2013 was when we really started blogging kind of uh, with and irregularity. That's okay. yeah. You know, we had been dabbling in it before, but and we actually had it was a like different a bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> anyway, <Same> irregularity. <laughs> you need my Okay, <laughs> our blog is a little constipated, I guess. Huh? Apparently, for ten years. I mean, with the book. I mean, like, oh my god, in the making. But what? Okay, so because I don't think I, I don't think I started to see your content until last year. Um, and I was like, because what I loved about it is you guys were very in tune with the audience. You all were, you know, actively commenting. And, and what recently uh, got my attention is that, David, I know you recently quit your nine to five. Correct. And so I was like, 
damn. Like, you know, like, not that I didn't think you guys were legit, but ahead of time. <laughs> but, you know, because, <laughs> but I was like, oh my God. I was like, I've got to talk to them to see, you know, what brought this out. Like, how did you get there, you know? And because, like, I do understand we have our passions. We all, you know, you want to help people. I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you still have to pay your own bills. And so mm-hmm. to, to be able to get to that point where you're able to officially quit your nine to five, I, I personally found it to be awesome. So how long before or prior to uh, this year, um, John, did you quit yours? I quit my job. um, It'll be two years ago next month. Okay. July. Was that a mutual decision for you guys to stay in the nine to five while the business was taking off? Yeah. Yeah, So there was a a period of time from 2012 or 13 or so until um, 2015, we were both working full-time jobs. um, And then by waking up early in the morning and working late at night on our own business, um, gotcha. We, our schedule has recently changed a little bit, but um, for the previous four or so years, we were waking up between four and four thirty in the morning, um, and then trying to get to bed by nine nine thirty. That always didn't work out, <laughs> but um, yeah, we would try to get to bed kind of you know somewhat early, I guess. Um, but then we had always the the plan was always that I would quit my job because um, at the time David was earning more than than I was, so it just made sense mathematically. Um, that I would quit my job and then continue to ramp up the business to, to a point where he could then quit his job, which we finally did uh, earlier this year. Yeah. So, okay. So let me ask you, and this is a total selfish question, by the way, I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> so you, you're working your nine to five, and this is for both of you. You're working mm-hmm. your nine to five. You know that there's obviously a bigger plan. You can see the future. You can damn near taste the goddamn future. Okay. Mm-hmm. How in the hell are you still going to work? <laughs> like I, well, just, I gotta know. Like I just gotta know. So to be honest, all of it goes back to when John and I had our first couple of conversations after we came out about our debt to each other. When okay. we came out about our debt, we we were fin- financial messes. We were we were we had this fantasy that we were going to buy land in the mountains and build a house, and at the same time we were living. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. <laughs> at the same time, we were living in a basement apartment. We didn't even own our own home. And we wanted to buy a vacation home. So we had this, I think we had this, this fantasy. Uh, we like to refer to it as um, the gay cliche of living fabulously, but fabulously yeah. broke. That we have, all, we have these fantasies of uh, we can spend money on all these different things. And we were doing that. We were taking the nice vacations. We were wearing the nice clothes. We were hanging out with friends of ours who were making double, triple of what we were, but you couldn't tell that we were any different than them uh, gotcha. by the way we were spending. But once we came out about our debt, we had this serious conversation. We said, what's, what's re- what would really make us happy? What would really make our lives happy? What do we really want out of life? We don't, I don't want $300 jeans just to impress people on a Saturday night. I don't need to drive a, uh, car so that it can sit in a parking lot or in a garage for (laughs) 95% of the time. And, you know, so we started to ask ourselves, what would really make us happy? And we both, because we were in financial services, we both knew that our lives would be less stressful if we made sure that we were taking care of our retirement. Now that's the kind of wah, wah, you know, nobody yeah, really likes, that's not the fun part, right? It's not sexy, it's <laughs> right. not fun. But we need to know it. We need right. to know it. Yeah. That's, that's true. But then the other, the other thing that it came down to us, what for us was we wanted to be able to travel because we both love traveling and we wanted to spend more time together. Uh, when it, that whole crux of, of spending time together was important to us because we were getting up at six o'clock in the morning, heading separate directions, being at work all day, coming back together at six o'clock at night, spending two or three hours together, yeah. going to bed and repeating that same monotonous, monotonous, boring life that so many people hate. I mean, 70% of people say they hate their jobs. And part of it is because of that, that monotonous yeah. schedule. Yeah. And so we said, we got to figure out how to break free from this. And that's kind of the original impetus behind writing the book but we just kept that in the back of our minds that this is what we want. We want to break free. We want to be somebody else than who we had been. And so that's when we said, okay, we need to figure out how one of us can stop working. Then that one can work on our business to make enough money to bring the other one home. And I love this. Very strategic. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, (laughs) 
It's, uh, it sounds much more intentional than what we were doing at the time, but it, gotcha. I think that, you know, you, when you put that out to the universe that this is what I want, and then on a regular basis, you have small habits that reinforce that that's what you want. You know, it, it, I mean, it's like the person who says they want to lose 10 pounds, but then they go eat a spoonful of ice cream every Amen. night or a pint of Ben and Jerry's every night. Amen. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, not, you're not reinforcing. <laughs> Blue, Blue, Bell. <laughs> Blue Bell was my friend. Like homemade. Blue Bell was my friend. Chubby gotcha. hubby, I could eat him all day. Gotcha. Gotcha. What? Yeah. So, I mean, but okay, like now I'm, I know I'm personally dealing with a, a particular nine to five job that's very challenging. It's very interesting. I don't know, damn, well, that's not where I'm supposed to be. So like, how do you, again, in your mind, you know that there's a bigger plan, but is it just self-discipline that you have to, you know, make sure you stay focused to, to hey, I, I know I need this job to pay my bills, but this is not where I'm supposed to be. Like, how do you, how do, you do that? Because it's still yeah. the nine to five, you know, day to day thing. That's just yeah. crazy. Right. So we knew what the, the, the long term goal was. And then we kind of just sort of re reverse engineered. How can we get to that point? And all along while we were working um, on our W2 jobs, you know, Lisa Nichols, the motivational speaker, she always says, you have to look at your <laughs> she, back there. Her book is like, like, I have one book right back there. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm She's going to be my best friend someday. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't know it. <laughs> and in fact, she has We're going to be in the same circle soon enough. Yeah. First Oprah, then Lisa, like, you know. <laughs> gotcha. But she always, she tell, always tells a story about how she used to look at her W-2 job as um, an investment in her long-term dream. Yeah. And so that's what we, how we had to look at our job. Um, what could we tolerate for the foreseeable future, two to six years, that could pay the bills and help fund our long-term goal? Um, so I think, you know, I think, like I said, we, we reverse engineered it. We used our W2 jobs to fund our goals, but then it took a lot of discipline of waking up, like I said, at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. It took a lot of, we had to decline a lot of RCPs to parties and the pride events mm -hmm. and all sorts of brunches. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've mm -hmm. you know, evolved away from some friends, unfortunately. Um, some have gravitated more closely to us. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. But so we, we just had to, like David said, we, we didn't like who we were. We knew what we wanted to be. We knew we had a higher purpose than working for someone else. Um, so we just had to put in the commitment and the time um, to, to kind of get there. And it does take a lot of self-discipline. Yeah. I think this couple of the other things that we really did is, as I mentioned before, we kind of picked off the big things in life that we knew that we shouldn't be spending money on if we wanted to reach our goal. It, when, when we paid off our debt, one of our goals was to buy a house uh, or to buy some sort of form of property. So we ended up buying a condo and we were, we were actually uh, going around with a real estate agent at the time he was showing us all of these, these fairly nice condos and we, we would have loved to have lived in them, but we kept on saying to ourselves, that's, that's four or five times what we make. And if we buy that, then we're going to probably be a little house poor. And if we're a little house poor, we, we know there are certain things we would never give up, but that would not leave enough room in our budget to set aside money for our retirement, to set aside money for travel. So we, we, made, the, we made those choices early on to not get sucked into some of those big purchases or renting a place that was more, the, you know, I can pretty much sleep anywhere, but um, I, don't oh need, I don't need to... <laughs> I don't need to put <laughs> you know. I'm trying to get there. Oh, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. It, and I think, fortunately, because we struggled and put the time and effort into paying our debt off, we learned some really good lessons there about how we can still have a really fun life with each other and with our friends and not go broke doing it, which in turn meant that we could save money so that we could quit our jobs. So. Which is, I gotcha, which is the ultimate goal for so many of us. So, so, okay, I know I heard you consistently talk about getting up earlier. So mm -hmm. was there a particular routine that you were on, like, consistently? Like, was there, like, a ritual every day? <laughs> there was. There still is, actually. But, um, so we oh. wake up between 4 and 4.30. Uh, the first thing that we do, one of us, whoever gets out of bed first, has to go make warm lemon water with turmeric, ginger, and a little bit of cayenne. Say what? It, yeah, it, it uh, <laughs> rehydrates your body, it gets you all energized, it wakes you up. Right. Um, so oh my we, God. we have that in the morning, it's like a, a warm tea sort of thing. Yeah. Um, 
and we drink that all morning long. And then the next uh, practice is that we meditate anywhere okay. from eight to 20 minutes. Um, and then we do, after that, we do what we call I feels, F-E-E-L-Z. Um, so, it, which is, this is quite interesting. In the leading up to me quitting my job, we sort of knew that there would be sort of this jealousy thing going on when I was able to stay at home in my pajamas and work and David would have to oh, get all dressed up and go to the office. Gotcha. Yeah. So we thought, you know, we, we need to make sure we reserve time for to be very honest and open with ourselves so that we didn't have that sort of acrimony. Um, so we created our feels where we each uh, share three feelings that we're having at the moment, whatever it is to save space, so whatever you want, good or bad, uh, and, and express it. Um, it's not a time for solutions. It's just time for expressing your feelings. Um, and then after, we, after that, we sit down, we do our journaling uh, for about five, 10 minutes. And then after that, we do affirmations for about five minutes. And then after that, we'll go um, uh, do our exercise for the day, whether it's running or lifting or a combination of the two. I'm so jealous of you guys right now. I am so jealous. You have no idea. Yeah, well, you so probably are jealous when we were getting up at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, don't, right? Now, don't, that's the craziest thing. Are you guys familiar with Hal Erod? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He the morning. cranked up my life, okay? Yeah. He really, really did. Um, but because of him, I get up every morning at 4.50. And so it's a natural routine. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do the journaling yet. I tried because of a, a recent guest. And mm -hmm. I did it for a couple of days. I freaking felt amazing. I just haven't developed the, di the discipline to consistently do it. Yeah. But getting up at 4.50 is my daily day thing. I do the meditation. And I'm actively working on, on I guess, feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And so it's really funny that you say that. Um, but feelings and emotions, I believe in experiencing those emotions no matter what. Yeah. But I've always looked at it as experiencing those emotions and then trying to find a solution. I never really thought about it that way, especially talking to my husband. We had an argument not too long ago, actually. And I never really thought about having those moments, babe, okay, look, let's just express the feelings and not necessarily yeah. look for a damn solution. Right. You know, like just to get it out. Let's just right. get it. I never looked at it that way. That's something I'm going to implement from you, John. Yeah, I don't, like, know <laughs> that every pro I don't know that every problem requires a solution. Um, sometimes I think just putting it out there is enough and, you know, maybe it'll, you know, organically fix itself. And, um, and, but, but honestly, yeah. in this particular situation, that's realistically what it was. Um, it, yeah. even, it did fix itself. Yeah. Um, it's because, you know, A, you, know, you feel like you're not being heard or you feel like you've heard the wrong thing or you took it the wrong way. And, and when you get it out, and it's so crazy because I know this, I just don't always <laughs> implement it. But I'm like, because when you get it out there and you hear how it sounds, you're just like, okay, now that's, okay, that's <laughs> You know? Sometimes that's the <laughs> you know? It that's, and it's just, but when it plays in your mind, you know, it's a completely different story and so yeah, you yeah. I, I, i'm gonna use that yeah. like thank you like totally. seriously. remember seriously. it's f-e-e-l-z <laughs> now that i'm glad you said that because i really thought you were saying s at the end i did not know that i did not know that z is in zebra yeah gotcha okay okay so He's okay gonna trademark that huh i know probably, I he probably made that. case today but he probably <laughs> question okay so you said you guys had a a conversation about your debt, mm -hmm. yeah. that cannot be easy. I mean, I, I, people, you don't even want to have a conversation with yourself about the, the strain that you're in, nevertheless, with your partner. Right. So yeah. how did that go? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we were having the conversations with ourselves individually until we kind of had our, um, you know, bare knuckles basement moment. You want yeah. to tell them how we got there? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just kind of set the stage just a little bit. Um, I, I had been laid off from work in two, at the, in the end of May in 2005. Um, I got a rather large severance check uh, and I was going to take two, basically a month or two off of work, use the rest of the money to pay off my debt and then get a job. Uh, so I end up spending the whole summer with a friend of mine sitting by the pool having margaritas and nachos and Chips While I was block. working, well, by he was the way. Right. Oh, oh. And I'm he sorry. wasn't even there for <laughs> he wasn't even there for support for me when Madonna fell off her horse. And so oh, I had no. to go through that whole thing by myself. Because <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> he was two sheets to the wind poolside. <laughs> <laughs> so I I think that when the when the summer ended and I started looking for a job and I had no money and I still had debt. Mm -hmm. I, I was starting to feel a little bit insecure with myself about 
how I had wasted all of that money. Um, gotcha. And uh, it was, it, were probably, it was probably close to $19,000 I wasted over a short t- period of time, just because I was, I was still paying my half of the bills that we had and mm-hmm. we were still doing, living that lifestyle that, that normal, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that fabulously broke lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so what ended up happening is we went up to the mountains to see a friend of John's. Uh, he and his girlfriend were living up in a small uh, part, uh, town in the mountains called Winter Park. We fell in love with the town. We had been there before, but I don't think we ever been there, had been there together and really talked about being up there. That's where we decided we wanted to buy land and build a house. So on Sunday, we were heading out of town. We stopped at a real estate office, got some information. We were on this kind of fantasy With high. one income? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> actually, actually I, had, I had started working. Oh, I, okay. I think, okay, okay, okay. I think I'd maybe been working for a month, if that. Yeah, it was new. Yeah. Um, wow. And so we left town. We were at this peak of fantasy. We were locked in a car together for an hour and a half. And we drove, we drove back down Best the mountain to Denver. And we went from being able to buy, a ho- buy land and build a house to maybe being able to buy a house that already existed to maybe buying a condo to maybe we shouldn't even be going up there for vacation. And <laughs> we got home and that's when we just, we said to each other, We're, we are a fi- financial messes. Here we are telling other people how to manage their money. We weren't doing it ourselves. And that's, that was kind of how that conversation, I, I wouldn't suggest that people lock themselves in a car, <laughs> but yeah. it may be a good idea to get into, get to go to a place where, you're, either, you're, you're both very comfortable, but it's not a place where one of you can turn around and walk away from the other. Right. You know, so you know, if, you're, if you have that kind of initial conversation at home, somebody can go lock themselves in Easily. the bathroom or a bedroom or just walk away. And mm-hmm. whereas if you're maybe in a place where you're both feel comfortable, but outside, that's how you can start it. And, and we actually, honestly, we tell people uh, who are listen to our podcast or come to our website, go ahead and blame it on us. Blame it on us that to say the deaf free guys said that we should talk about this, or I wanted to talk to you about something that I heard on the Queer Money podcast. This as kind of the introduction to the conversation, you know, just maybe things like, what do you think we could do to improve our finances? Or I'm feeling uncomfortable about the amount of debt I have. What do you think we could do to change that? You know, it, and it's it is a very you have to be very vulnerable you have to be honest with someone especially if you want them to be honest with you because money is not an honest conversation that we have in this country it we is not, not. Yeah. and especially in the lgbt community because we all thing. are fabulous right <laughs> right yeah. we're all mitch and cam on tv we think or that's how we have to spend and live but mo- yeah. you know so many of us can't can't afford that and we couldn't at the time either one thing I, I, a saying that I learned that was probably, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago now. And um, I actually, I had just moved on my own myself because I was one of the crazy hard headed people that should have stayed at home two more years. Um, <laughs> you know, like I just should have, but I didn't want an apartment. I wanted a house. Um, I didn't want just any house. I wanted a gated community, you know, yeah, yeah. just it's crazy stuff. But I remember my neighbors, which were a school teacher, retired caterer, um, like it's so crazy because everyone in the community drives Mercedes and, and Jaguars, you know, it was just the craziest thing. When we, we had a conversation, they couldn't afford a damn thing. You know, the retired <laughs> caterer, you know, she was living on, her, you know, the cars that she had were rented that her children were paying for, you know, mm-hmm. it was just crazy stuff. And but the thing that I learned back then was, Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses because yeah. most of them are broke too, right. you know? And it was yeah. just, it was the craziest thing. And I was just like, why am I trying to keep up with you guys? Like, right. what the hell? Right. right. Can't pay my bills. We're competing I, to see who can dig the fastest grave. <laughs> it, it, it's, I literally, I had a doctor staying next door to me. Kid you not. Um, he had a stay at home wife. And um, I think they had maybe three or four kids. Got evicted. Oh, wow. My dumb ass. <laughs> I'm driving by, it's framing, and I see their, their, their items outside. I thought they were moving. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, this doctor is here doing his residency. You know, I'm just as nice as can be. But I, I found out a week later that they had gotten evicted. Yeah. I just blew my mind. I was like, a doctor? Like, how is I that thought, possible? 
I thought you were going to say you thought there was a yard sale and you started to go through their stuff. <laughs> that would have been so bad. Oh, that would have been so bad. No, I, didn't that. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I, I just thought that they were moving. I just, yeah. it was just really, really crazy. So, okay, it, I know you mentioned the book. That's so true. There are so many people who are earning six-figure salaries, but they're living way beyond their means. And they just way have- beyond. Six figure debt. That's all they have. Yeah. Yeah. Or or twice that. And you know, paying one credit card to, to pay this one off and so forth. Like it, it's it's really bad. And yeah. and I'm like, we're not having that conversation. But before I ask that question, what what was the title of the book? I want to make sure that I link that up. Sure. It's um for the four principles of a debt free life. And then the podcast is queer money. And how can people get a hold of you guys? I know they're going to have to. We are debt free guys on all social media platforms except for Instagram. Except for Instagram. On that, we're right, John underscore and underscore David. <laughs> or queer, or the queer, money, queer Money Podcast. We have two Instagram profiles, one yeah. for the podcast. So. Yeah. And you can always email us through our site. Go to debtfreeguys.com and click on contact. That- that's actually what I was about to say. I was like, they're so <laughs> totally approachable. So you make sure you email them with any questions that you have, uh, or at Thank least you. get in contact with them with any questions. Because um, again, this is a conversation that we don't have. And right. typically we are afraid. And, and, and it's so crazy because we, I mean, you're making the living, but you're making the living to try to keep up with somebody else. Right. And it serves absolutely no purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm with you. I Sorry. think it was... It, I've seen it credit, accredited to to Will Smith, but I'm not certain if he was the first one to say it. But it was ba- his. He basically said, "Stop buying shit to ple- to make other people happy that you don't care about," or something to basically to, to that effect. effect. Right? Yeah. Is is that we waste our lives buying stuff to impress other people that we actually don't care that much about? But at the same time, we're driving the people who are closest to us crazy because we're stressed out about debt we're stressed out about not being able to provide them with the things that they want or need why why do we do that why do we make that kind of trade-off of trying to impress other people there's some there's something inside that's missing right Right. if we're doing that there's something inside that's wrong well and that's what the the whole point of our business is and i know that we're called debt for guys and it looks like we're our goal is to just help people become debt free but we know from personal experience that you can't live a completely fulfilled life, that you can't be your authentic self, that you can't be stress-free and living in the moment if you've always got this nagging debit in your, the back of your head, you know, whether it's $5,000 or $60,000, that's always eating away at you and you can't be your full and best self if you're always concerned about that. I agree. I agree. I know someone actually right today, like she, she, oh, she, she makes a lot of six figures. Like it's just crazy, but she's taking care of so many different households. Yeah. That it is, it's eating her alive. It's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It mm-hmm. is completely ridiculous. So, and in okay. most ca- in most cases, if you get your spending in order and you manage it appropriately, you can actually have a better quality of life, not living on debt than you could in debt. So um, how, and that's how, how? we've experienced so say you, you've had this question, you've had this, this thought in your mind, okay? Obviously, I'm borderline at rock bottom. Like, I really don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, but my mindset is still, I want more out of life. Um, I do still want the finer things of life. I don't want to necessarily give up the lifestyle that I've, I'm living. But I know I, I need to get out of debt. Like, how did you do that with that yeah. mindset? So the, we did several years of sacrificing. We did, there was several years where we weren't living the, the, the high end um, great life. Uh, we, we dialed back our expenses quite considerably, all with the goal of paying off our debt so that we could actually then after that live the life we wanted. Yeah. So, I mean, but is there something that you would suggest or when you're coaching or when you're talking to any of your clients, do they ever have a, ever have a hard time struggling with that? Because like, that's a major trade off. You know, yeah. that is a, yeah. it's a trade-off. Like, yeah. how, how do you explain this to someone? How do you get them on board with that? Like, how can a person right. practically, how can, can they do that? I, I think one of the biggest things is to just ask yourself, how long will it last? Okay. Truly, how long will it last? Because eventually someone's going to become calling. Whether it's you getting evicted out of your house, like the gentleman you talked about, and how embarrassing is that? Or the bill collector's, waking you up in the middle of the night and you will eventually go crazy or you, or, you know, here's an example. When I was, when I was still on my own, I was living in South Dakota. I needed some Hold money. Wait a second. You were not in South Dakota. Yeah. 
That's like, where David <laughs> found himself. Yeah. Oh my God. He turned gay in South Dakota and then he came back to Denver and found me. No. Was it from boredom? Was it from boredom? Like no. I, you just had to have been bored in South Dakota. No, I right? um, <laughs> This is a whole other open. Yeah, yeah, this is a total whole oh other open. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to stop you, but that, I just, I never pictured you in South Dakota. No. <laughs> um, I, I got to a point where I needed some money and so I, I contacted my parents and asked them to wire me some money. And they did. They sent me $300. I went down to the bank the next day and my account was empty. And the reason it was empty was because my account had been garnished by oh. my credit card company. So eventually someone's going to come calling and it's going to be extremely devastating or embarrassing. Yeah. So which is better? Do you want that extra martini when you're out with your friends? Do you want that extra $20,000 car or do you want to be embarrassed? Um, yeah. I, I t you know, I, I'm glad that it happened to us the way it did, that we had the realization that we did without having to go through that kind of rock bottom. Um, yeah. So I think that it's good to have that as a reminder in the back of your head. Um, I think one of the other things is we always ask people, the things that you're spending your money on, are they truly making you happy? Because they're probably not if you're continuing to spend. So many of us do therapy shopping. We do therapy dining out. We do therapy drinking. We do all of these things that we go and do because it, it satiates a feeling in us for, um, for the moment. Yeah. But I, I can't tell you how proud John and I were when we paid off our debt. And, and we set up these milestone goals all the way, all the way along that kind of reminded us that this is what we were working towards. Um, and we were honest with our, our friends and our family. And with, hmm. back, back then we told John's family, we said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna refrain from doing Christmas presents for a couple of years because we're trying to pay off debt. It's lasted for- Actually, it's never, we never resumed. We never resumed. All the adults decided that they liked it. <laughs> now we still spend money on the kids. But yeah. once you once you turn eighteen or graduate school, I forget what the rule is. Yeah. But you know, then you're yeah. you're off the hook. So that's um, a rule. That should be a rule. We haven't yeah. resumed it. So every now and then we'll send a surprise. But yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Like, we don't, don't, we don't all go into debt every holiday season. <laughs> and there's there are so many ways to have fun, it, especially if you're you, the the reason you want to have fun is to be with someone you love or your friends. There's so many ways to have fun without having to break the bank. Yeah, you know, I mean, John and I try to do that regularly. <laughs> yeah, sex is free. I mean, hell, it is. I mean, it is. It, I mean, it really is. I mean, you know. I mean, we don't have two nickels to rub together, but. I mean, hell, now you, you can do that else. anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> you guys. You guys have been a blast. I, I, I had do. A cocktail yet. Yeah. Well, actually, I had one shot. Like, I swear to you. I had, like, one little shot. shot. Like, I mean, just one freaking shot. And that was it. So, and I'm like, if you guys hadn't had anything and you're already like this, just, oh yeah. my gosh. We usually have a salad for lunch and we usually have bought a glass of white wine with us. And since we were doing this, Dave was like, no, let's hold off on the white wine until after we record. <laughs> you could have totally, that would have made even more better TV. Like, that would have made even better. We have done I, before. We've done our Facebook lives while we have a glass of wine sometimes. But because it's realistic, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. I'm like, you're not yeah. some, you know, held on some damn pedestal. You I know? don't not it's, drink. It, 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 <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Like, um, I, like I told you, my nine to five, I still like lead my team and da 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 da. And I, I made a joke with them a few years ago. I was like, I literally went from not drinking at all to wine i was like and i have been upgraded to whiskey okay i was like you guys i have made a whiskey drink of my own and i was like i don't even i was like i swear to you three years ago i didn't drink i was like i didn't drink i'm like i'm getting gray hair i was like this has got to go like i i, I got curve to get from that, that cosmopolitan way back in the day huh <laughs> <laughs> it used to be apple martinis for me years ago, uh, years ago. then i stopped <laughs> but i have one final question of which sure. you guys and um like this has been a blast like i've had so much fun you guys have no idea thank likewise thank but you. yes exactly this actually bleeds off into the final question like success and happiness it, it's, it's been my journey and i know for a fact that it's drastically different for everybody yes. but what is it for you guys like what does it mean to be successful or to be happy 
What does that mean? What does that look like? So, no, Mr. Robin, I, how do you answer that? Well, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share one thing that has happened. I, I quit my job on April 4th. Um, and almost every single day since then, John looks at me and he says, like, usually around 3.30 in the afternoon, he says, would you rather be doing this or would you rather be driving in rush hour traffic? Mm. And that's, I think that's what it is, is success and happiness is that we're actually doing what we want rather than, you know, I, I don't know who said it, but if you're not building your own dreams, you're building someone else's. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of building someone else's dream, uh, you know, and so that's when we started to build our own. And I think that that's what, we have our ups and downs. I, <laughs> the week after I gave notice <laughs> at work, we had a little bit of a, we had a couple of unfortunate situations happen with our business. Yeah. And literally I was sitting at our dining room table with my hands, my head in my hands saying, I have just made the biggest mistake of my life. No way. I, I was also sick. I'm not on DayQuil, but oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he was uh, hopped up on that. <laughs> I, I, had, I was freaking out. out. <laughs> yeah, I was freaking out that, that we weren't going to be able to make it. That's all coming from inside your head. You know, that's, it, that's not coming from what you've put out there to the universe to tell, you know, whether it's universe or God, whoever you are going to, to talk about what you truly feel. And that that's part of what we do with our affirmations. Uh, it, I talk to the universe when, when I do that. And that's why I think that whether we're living off of $50,000 a year or $500,000 a year, as long as we are doing what we need to do to make ourselves happy, truly happy, then we're successful. Yeah. yeah. I'll add, I think. I love that. Oh, I love yep, that. We've been fortunate enough to have a lot of national media attention. Um, and that's all been great, but we get so excited when we, when we get that random email or direct message from some little gay poor person in the middle of the country that says, <laughs> you've inspired me to pay off my debt or to do X to start my own business. And I think the fact that we're able to now have that kind of impact on our community, I think motivates both of us more than anything else, I think, from our business. Um, you know, we, we definitely feel that um, much of the LGBT community is in, living in a precarious position. And when times are tough for us, as they seem to be right now, if, if we're financially insecure, then we don't have the, the, the bandwidth, the income, the, the time to be able to invest and fight for our freedoms. And the, the fact that we're able to start, start making those kinds of um, improvements in people's lives so that we can then improve um, the queer community as a whole um, um, excites us more than anything. You guys are so like you guys are awesome. Thank like, you. Thank you. you are too. I mean, at a level, yeah. Because like, you're, you're an inspiration too. I mean, what you're doing to me, I think, is amazing. Thank people you. always think like I, I, I can't. Tell, we're in some mastermind groups, and there are people who have been thinking about starting a podcast or a video cast for for what, years, a year, now. years. Yeah. And you know, they just you don't, don't do it. Don't just just jump in there and do it. And, we, and you're, you're it. a perfect example right. of just I'm going to pave this path for myself. You don't. You might not know where exactly it's going to go, but it's going to go somewhere. Something. It's going to benefit you. It's going to benefit the community. And the the fact that you're doing that is an inspiration to the community as well. I thank you guys so much for that. Like I really, really, really do. Like, and I just and I want you guys to understand. Like, just putting that on the table for someone to go back and think. And and what and my whole mission, of course, is positivity and having right. positive conversations. And it's really about giving people that confidence that they need that they never really, really got, you mm -hmm. know, so that they can believe in themselves to find out what truthfully makes them happy. But what I love that you guys are doing is you're, from the financial standpoint of things, you're saying, what is it that truthfully makes you happy? Yeah, and right. it's making them think, you know, like, what, what is it? What is it that I'm going to be better served at? What is it that's yeah. going to be a better outcome for me later on in life? And I'm like, once we can do that as a whole and as a group of people, we will be so much better. And we all can just stay in our damn lanes, you know, find it, you know, find that whatever that lane is and stay right. in our defined lane and just grow and be the best who we yeah. are. And, but you can't do that if you're living for somebody else. And no, so I you know, love Dr. That you Phil calls it. Dr. Phil calls it living an assigned life. And so many of us live an assigned life. We have the careers that our parents think that we should have. We live according to what the queer community th thinks is the definition of success. But we're, we're all born with a purpose. 
And if, if we're not living according to our purpose, then not only are we stealing from ourselves, but we're stealing with society as a whole. We're not giving society what it needs. And then if you don't give that to society, then that dream is going to hop to somebody else. And you, you, know, you want to live your purpose. <laughs> you never cry. You never cry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is a, that is a great place to end. Yeah. Is there, are there any other final words that you like? Uh, yeah, will you come on Career Money sometime? Yes, we'd like to have you, you on the podcast. name it. <laughs> and I'm there. I am there. Just don't ask me how much debt I'm in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> as long as your work, you know what? It, no one should ever be ashamed that they have debt. Yeah. yeah. The shame is if you're not doing anything to, to improve your situation. 100% If right. you're digging yourself into a deeper hole, then there should be shame there because you're not making your life better and you're never going to be able to make anybody else's life better. I will say one thing I had to find out for myself is um, because, and I do it or I struggle, I used to struggle with it with the different podcasts that I would listen to and listening to so much advice and understanding and realizing that there's so many different ways that you can do, you know, you know, you can go on your own path. Like there's so many different ways that you can accomplish a goal. Mm -hmm. um, but I was originally listening to uh, Dave Ramsey and like mm -hmm. so many other people. And so I, I knew for me, I'm like, I'm going to, I want a loan, you know, I, I want a loan for this and I want a loan for that, you know? Yeah. And so being able to find out what I truthfully needed a loan for, what I don't, and it, that was a struggle. But once yeah. I finally got that narrowed down, I'm like, okay, <laughs> the rest of this is a breeze. Now, now let, me, let me go through this, you know, cause I, right. you know, I don't need a loan to go to have a shopping limit, you know, but I do right. want a house. You know, I'm like, I do want this particular car that, that's on a budget, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, but anyway, I had to find out what was right for right. me. Right, exactly. And so, um, yeah, so I'm really, I'm really glad you said that. I'm really awesome. Glad that. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I thank you guys so much again. Well, thank God. you. We appreciate thank it. We appreciate it. it. Just name. We would definitely be in touch because I'm loving you guys. Yeah. I, I was <laughs> going to love you all this much, but I'm loving you all. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> thank you. I know. You it, make me smile every day. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. I'm gonna, well, yeah. Damn it. I know I'm doing my job now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can provide a smile to one person a day, you know, you're winning. Like, I think, like seriously. Okay. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother podcast. Because I do that too with the, the checkout people. I, I do different things about that. Um, yeah. I talk about that all the time. Nice. But. You guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday and have Thank a damn drink for me. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm right. going to need it a little bit That's later. The next, I'm walking right to the refrigerator. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I hope you took notes with me on that one because that was some serious knowledge. If you have not already, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to our channel on iTunes or your favorite podcasting source. Also, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or, oh my goodness, or you can even catch the live conversations right there on YouTube. <laughs> See you again soon. Until next time, let's make positivity even louder.